Do you remember life before the internet? A time when documents arrived by post, meetings were face to face, phones were chained to desk and communication was painfully slow. Back then, being at work meant physically being at work. Terminals were connected to a local mainframe and the office shredder. Well, that was the bastion of security. Today, the continuous advancements of technology have resulted in greater business agility. It's allowing them to reach new markets and in turn boost global economies. But with each technical advancement, each digitized process, the risk of exploitation has increased significantly. And as companies continue to evolve and employees work remotely, security has become a more complex concern. In this series of videos, we will explore security from the ground up. We will understand the concepts, the challenges and best practices before implementing security controls across the Microsoft stack. Together, we will ensure that we become grounded in best practice and adopt a trust no one, verify everything methodology. So today, I want to start by discussing the fundamentals of security and help you define a defense in depth model. Again, this becomes significantly easier to conceptualize if we work on the premise that everyone and everything is a potential security risk. In industry terms, this is known as zero trust. It means that as a security professional, we are always assuming that a breach has occurred or is indeed imminent. This means that we must work to ensure that our networks, our devices, our users and data are authenticated, that it's encrypted and monitored so that we may detect and in turn respond to threats. Let's look at the six principles in more detail. We'll begin with identity, or more specifically, authentication of identity. Now this could include our user accounts, our device accounts, or even service accounts. Basically, anything that may gain access to data or company resources will need to be verified by an identity provider and the principles of least privilege will need to be employed. This could be Active Directory for on-premises resources or Azure Active Directory for those based in the cloud. For most companies, it will typically be a hybrid approach using a combination of the two. Next, we need to think about devices. Now, this poses significant threats to the company, especially in the current climate where employees are working remotely. For this reason, we need to ensure that the systems consuming company resources are monitored for security posture and compliance. But applications also need to be top of mind. Think about it. Do you know how many applications have access to your company network or company data? Are all of your applications managed by IT? How do you police applications on personal devices or ensure end users have not unknowingly given access to company intellectual property? And what about data? Is sensitive data being contained? How do you stop it being forwarded by email or copied onto a USB drive? You see, even if it's not for malicious intent, Removing data from the confines of company perimeters can lead to breaches in data laws and governance. In fact, 95% of cybersecurity breaches are caused by human error. To that, we need to ensure that the data is classified, the data is labeled, and the data is encrypted so that it remains safe. For our infrastructure, we need to ensure that the right access is available when needed defining the ports, the protocols, and the IP ranges that should be open. We need to collate and understand real-time telemetry so we may detect anomalies and proactively address security concerns. Now, if we think about it, this problem will only get bigger. We have more people working remotely than ever before, and with the implementation of 5G networking and the increasing bandwidth of connected edge devices, we can expect an increase in cyber attack vulnerabilities too. Finally, we need to ensure that our networks are correctly segmented. We need to ensure that firewalls, network security groups and bastions are in place so that we may control the flow of traffic and not expose unnecessary services to public networks. To tackle these risks, we need to adopt a layered approach. 
we need to identify possible security concerns and the trade-off it will have to identity access and infrastructure availability. You see, we can no longer approach security in a monolithic manner and just assume that one form of protection will work. We need to be mindful of the different types of threats, threats that may try to deny services, steal data or extort money. Examples of a layered approach may include things such as physical security, identity security, perimeter security, network security, compute security, application security, and data security. And I appreciate this is a lot to consider and the goalposts are continually moving. Perhaps it's for this very reason that skilled cybersecurity professionals are outnumbered by market demand. In fact, it's estimated that over 4 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs now exist, which as you can imagine, is a growing concern. But there is a silver lining and yet another advantage to adopting a cloud practice. You see, by consuming cloud resources, you gain the advantages of a global hyperscale provider and all of the security controls and practices therewith. Microsoft designs, builds, and operates data centers in a way that strictly controls physical access to the areas where your data is stored. We employ a layered approach that significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access, and we continue to review best practice to ensure that we are leaders in industry compliance. But security will always remain a shared responsibility, the weight of which will shift depending on what service tiers are consumed. So let's look at these in more detail. Now I'm going to break this down into three core offerings. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. With infrastructure as a service, or IaaS for short, you are consuming the cloud provider's infrastructure. This means that you don't have to host any physical servers, maintain a data center, or even worry about perimeter security. You're effectively leasing the hardware and relying on Microsoft to keep it secure. But this also means that much of the security considerations remain the responsibility of the consumer. You see, Microsoft can make suggestions and will through tools such as the security center. But the onus is on you to ensure that resources are properly patched, encrypted and secured. Now, as companies modernize and build cloud-ready solutions, services such as Platform as a Service or PaaS will become the natural choice. This service tier allows companies to become laser-focused on the application, leaving the management of the underlying infrastructure the responsibility of the cloud provider. Again, this doesn't remove all responsibility from the consumer, but means that more is focused on application control and authentication and access. Finally, we have off-the-shelf software as a service or SaaS-based applications. These are both hosted and managed by the cloud provider and consumed through a subscription plan. Think Microsoft 365, Dynamics or CRM, for example. This tier requires the least amount of management by the consumer with the cloud provider being responsible for everything except access and identities. So where does this leave us? Well, we know that security must be top of mind, but keeping abreast of legislation and regulatory compliance is a daunting task at best. By choosing a cloud provider such as Microsoft, you're assured that the products and services you consume are built on trust and put you firmly in control. Ultimately, it's about a set of services that give you the information you need to make the right choices. Choices that will help you protect your company assets and maintain consumer trust. Services such as the Azure Security Center that monitors both your cloud and on-premise environments, providing you with a series of recommendations and remediations where necessary. Or perhaps the extended M365 services that allow you to strengthen your security posture across identities, email, data, and apps. Services providing rich dashboards for threat analytics, vulnerability assessment, and advanced threat hunting. Maybe it's the compliance portal and the services that control data handling policies and regulatory compliance. The fact is we need to explore all of them 
and I'm committed to ensuring over the course of this video series, you're exposed to the best in breed security solutions that the industry has to offer. So join me next time as we take a closer look into identity and access management.